Body mass index, is it useful or useless? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're gonna to talk all about one of the most common ways of grouping people by their body weights. The body mass index or BMI. What it is, how it's used, if it's a good measure, and what are some of the alternatives? BMI has a lot of haters, and if you're one of them, I'd love it if you watched all the way to the end of this video for two reasons. So you can really understand the problems with BMI, and so you can understand why it's still used so much and when it can actually be useful. I just wanna point out that I'm not trying to recommend or advise against using BMI. I'm just gonna talk about the science surrounding it so you have a better understanding yourself. Let's get started. So. What is BMI exactly? BMI was first developed in the mid 1800s by a polymath, that's someone with expertise in a lot of different fields of sciences, called Adolf Quetelet, who also founded the science of anthropometry, which is how we measure human physical shape and sizes. It was actually originally called the Quetelet Index, but became commonly known as the body mass index in the 1970s, thanks to its use by one of the most famous nutrition researchers at the time, Ansel Keys. BMI is a way of measuring someone's body weight in relation to their height. And you can calculate it yourself by dividing your weight in kilograms by your height in meters squared. So for someone who weighs 75 kilograms and is 178 centimeters tall, the formula looks like 75 divided by 1.78 squared, and that gives us a BMI of 23.7. Now, BMI on its own doesn't tell us much, so scientists have created BMI categories to group people according to how far their weight is from the norm for their height. The World Health Organization has designated the normal BMI range to be from 18.5 to 24.9. Below 18.5 is considered underweight, and with below 16 being considered severe underweight, and actually does happen in some extreme cases, such as starvation and even in anorexia. On the other end of the spectrum, a BMI of 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight, and 30 or over is classified as obese. In fact, there are obesity classifications. Class one, which is a BMI of 30 to 34.9. Obesity class two, which is 35 to 39.9. And obesity class three, which is a BMI of 40 or more. This is actually a problem with the name of BMI classifications and not BMI itself. Nobody wants to get their BMI measured and to be called overweight or obese. So maybe changing the name of the categories to something neutral, like numbers, might be less unpleasant. For example, a normal BMI could be called class zero and underweight could be called BMI class minus one or, or overweight could be called BMI class plus one but the naming system probably isn't going to change anytime soon. At this point, it's really important to point out that these categories are all just medical terms that are used to categorize people by weight in relation to height. Science loves categorizing things because that helps us to understand concepts better. We're also able to observe certain health trends in relation to different BMI categories. You see, the further someone's BMI is from the normal range in either direction, over or underweight, the greater risk they have of health problems. This is where BMI can actually have some use. It can, and I say can because it definitely doesn't apply in all cases, be a really quick and easy screening tool in medicine for identifying when someone is in a weight category that might put them at a risk of a specific health problem, for example, diabetes. I use the word risk here because in science, we can only talk about risk because nothing is definite. For example, smoking can greatly increase someone's risk of lung cancer. It doesn't mean they will definitely get lung cancer if they smoke, and it doesn't mean that someone that doesn't smoke won't get lung cancer. It just means that a smoker has a greater chance of getting lung cancer than a non-smoker. In the same way, people whose BMIs are further from the norm have a greater statistical chance of health issues, but it is by no means definite in all cases. There are always exceptions. BMI is very widely used because it is super easy to measure, as you just need someone's height and weight. You don't need any fancy equipment to measure those and they're quick and cheap to work out. In most medical practices that are struggling to get through a lot of patients in a day, this makes it really popular index to categorize people. BMI is quick, cheap, easy, and in a very general sense, it has a relation with some health conditions or risk of those conditions. Here's the thing though, BMI is not a way of diagnosing how much body fat someone has nor is it a good way of categorizing someone as healthy or unhealthy. This is because BMI doesn't tell us anything about someone's level of body fat, their body fat distribution, which is where they store body fat on their body, which has a major impact on health, 
or their muscle mass. Let me explain why this is a major problem. In the normal BMI category, you will have people with normal levels of muscle and body fat, but you can also have people who have very low levels of muscle and high levels of body fat. This is sometimes known as skinny fat in popular culture, but in research we call it sarcopenic obesity. From sarcopenia, which means low levels of muscle mass, and obesity, which means higher levels of body fat. We know this is actually a very unhealthy type of body composition, but because it's in the normal BMI category, it often gets missed and overlooked. On the other hand, you can find many athletes that have high levels of muscle and low levels of body fat. But because of all their muscle and how heavy muscle is, they are all categorized as overweight or some as even obese. So if you just look at their BMI, you'd think that they might be at a high risk of health problems when in fact, they may be exceptionally healthy, as many athletes are. That said, a lot of people who work out like to brag that they have a high BMI, but it's because of all their muscle, even though they might have a lot of body fat too. There comes a point where lots of muscle isn't going to protect someone against the negative effects of excess body fat. Now, with that said, just because someone has a higher level of body fat doesn't necessarily mean they're less healthy. There are people who have something known as metabolically healthy obesity, which means their BMI is in the obese category, they have high levels of body fat, but they don't have any of the metabolic issues associated with obesity, like high blood sugar, insulin resistance, high LDL or bad cholesterol, and low HDL, which is the good cholesterol. That said, people with metabolically healthy obesity aren't very common and are at a higher risk of developing health issues in the future. But that's a complicated topic that might deserve a video of its own. Here's another problem with BMI, weight stigma. Weight stigma is when people are discriminated against either by thoughts or actions because of their weight. Categorizing people based exclusively on their weight or level of body fat or BMI can lead to weight stigma. And here's an example of how. If someone who is classified as overweight or obese goes to the doctor with a health complaint, there are some doctors that might put their health issue down to their body weight and tell them that they just need to lose weight to feel better without much further investigation or testing. Not only is that a way to treat a patient and give advice, it also runs the risk that they miss out on the real reason for the person's health issue because the doctor doesn't look beyond body weight. And if that's not bad enough, it might even stop someone in a larger body from going to the doctor in the future because they know they're going to be discriminated against because of their size. And that means they might miss out on getting the medical care that they need. So hopefully now you understand that BMI on its own isn't particularly useful for determining if someone is healthy or not. What could we use instead? Well, one easy measure to add to BMI is someone's waist to hip ratio or waist to height ratio. This gives us a better idea of where or how people are storing body fat. This is because if someone is storing a lot of body fat around their waist, something known as abdominal obesity, they have a much higher risk of suffering from cardiometabolic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Then you have something like DEXA. DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry, and it's a technique that uses X-rays to measure body composition. It gives really accurate measurements of someone's muscle mass, body fat percentage, and even where people store body fat, for example, around their abdomen, or even around their organs, which is known as visceral fat, and can have a lot of negative health effects. While DEXA may be one of the best ways to work out someone's level of body fat and muscle, it's also expensive and can only be done in places with a very expensive DEXA scanner, like big hospitals or universities. And that brings us back to why BMI is so popular. It's quick, cheap, and very easy to measure. And that's why it's used so much as an initial screening tool. And while BMI may not give us much useful information on an individual's health, it is really useful for looking at trends in population health. To give you an idea of what I mean by this, the average BMI in places like Europe and the US has been going up pretty steadily since the 1970s. And so has the average waist circumference. You can't really say that it's because most people are getting jacked and putting on more muscle. So that increase in BMI is likely because of an increase in body fat. We also have a lot of research that shows that very high and very low BMIs are associated with a greater risk of dying from diseases like heart disease and diabetes, just in general. So putting all of that together, we can see that BMI is a useful tool for looking very basically at how body weight is related to health in the general population over time. It is by no means a complete tool and it is not very useful for giving us a complete idea of an individual's health. And don't forget that having a very low BMI puts people at a greater risk of sickness and death too. So it's important to remember that there's probably a sweet spot of BMI that can vary a lot between people. So 
Does all this make sense? I hope this video helps you understand that BMI isn't completely useless, but it does have a lot of limitations that scientists are very aware of. And that's exactly why there are so many other factors to take into account to get a better picture of an individual's health. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.